Good evening, Periscope. How are we doing? Is everybody all right? Um, I'm going to give people a few minutes to join, as usual. For those who are joining early, well, not early, but on time, I've just seen Fanny, Sarah's here. Um, how's it going, everybody? Just let me know if it sounds like my audio is coming through this microphone. I've noticed on a couple of scopes over the last two weeks, um, Periscope's not actually acknowledged the fact that I've got an external mic on. So let me know if it sounds like dead echoey or if it sounds like I've actually got, you know, relatively good sound. It's not going to be perfect because it's Periscope. Um, but let me you know sounds tinny a little because it sound like I don't really know how, if I do this can you hear anything is that is, is the mic actually is that picking up if I go if I talk 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 like this no right it's doing it again isn't it yeah it's just it's, it's, it's weird this because it records I'm gonna what I'm gonna do I'm gonna unplug this plug it back in see if this does anything is, is the sound changed at all now like you're in the toilet. Yeah, says the hipster. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? That's not that's not good. That's just the standard mic on the uh, iPad. Has that done anything? Uh, how are we doing? Uh, who's here? It sounds better, says Fanny. It's weird. I think Periscope's not um, not picking up. Um, good evening, Dawn. Um, Mr. Chips says a bit of a humming sound. Um, is that is that any any better? Always like, I mean, you're going to get a little bit of interference, I guess, because it's just, you know, it's just online streaming. But um, does it sound as tinny as it did before? Um, is it doing anything like through this? You know, the other night when I basically I played my iPhone through here. Yes, both can hear you fine. So this this is on, yeah. I'm talking right into the microphone <laughs> because um, yeah, on some of the replays, only two. I've just noticed actually it's not picked up the fact that I've got a mic plugged into my uh, into my iPad. Hello Anna. Um, good evening. So um, so yeah, hopefully that's a uh, that's coming through a bit better now. Fingers crossed. I'll check on the replay and if not, I'm gonna get in touch with Periscope and go, what have you changed? Because for 130 of these periscopes it was fine. But on two it wasn't. Sophie, good evening. Um, sounds husky. Husky spine, as long as it doesn't sound like dead, dead echoey like I'm just using the internal mic on the iPad. Um, that's not a good microphone. It's not a great experience for you guys, audio-wise. Um, but yeah, hopefully this is a bit better than it, uh, it was before. Now I've, um, I've plugged that back in. Um, so how's everybody doing? I've had an awesome couple of days. I released a video series this week um, called Bulletproof Acto. It's a mini course. It's a three video free, um, a free three part mini series on positive psychology, high performance, basically high performance science back positive psychology for actors. Although it applies set anybody in the world. Uh, Hipster says love it. Um, Hipster video one is out which I know you have seen because you left a comment underneath it. Video two is going to be out on Friday and video three is coming out next Tuesday. It's amazing. Thank you says Miss Gypsy. Um, it is powerful stuff and that's like you know completely free for everybody. What I'm going to teach you in video two and then in video three is effectively a formula. Literally a formula. Can't wait to see it. You should definitely see it. Um, it's a formula, Brian, for... I said this, and I know you're going to think this sounds bullshit, right? You're going to go, Ross, this is just bullshit. But it's a formula for absolute guaranteed success in any area of your life. And I mean that, okay? I absolutely mean that. And I know if you saw that on some kind of web advert or something, you'd be like, who's this idiot trying to rip me off some get-rich-quick scheme? Oh, just do this and you'll be dead successful. Um, it does require work, but if you implement this formula into your life that you're going to find out all about over these three videos, and in total it's nearly an hour and a half to worth of really high quality coaching for free um, you will start seeing more success in every part of your life you implement this in than probably you have ever experienced before seriously but you just got to commit to the videos watch them all implement this formula and it will change your life and I'm saying that because it absolutely changed my life about eight years ago when I actively started implementing this um, implementing this uh, formula. Anna says connection's bad. How's everyone else's connection? It might just be your connection to Periscope, Anna. If it's um, if it's dodgy, just press the cross in the top right hand corner, X out, come back in and you might get a better connection. Um, deep thought provoking, all good here, says Fanny. Excellent, so if you've not got that video yet, that, vi that video one, and you want to receive that, and you want to get the next two videos for free as well, go to bulletproofactor.com. Tony Rossi, good evening. Uh, just go to bulletproofactor.com. It'll ask you, you'll see a little video of me, and it'll say, hey, put your name, just your first name, and your email address in here, and I will then email you the videos through. Um, it's, 
it's an awesome series that will really, really help you. For anybody's connection that's dodgy um, tonight, periscope wise, it looks like my connection to the net's really quite good. I can see on the, I can see what you guys should be seeing, um, and it looks stable. Um, I'll know on my end if my connection's bad. So if your connection's not quite, you know, not quite as good as normal, just press the cross in the top right hand corner of your screen, and then come back into the scope, and you'll connect to a different server. At Periscope and hopefully that'll, that'll serve you this video a bit better. Unfortunately it's a little bit out of my control um, but if it is dodgy yet yeah, just keep keep exiting out coming back in and hopefully you'll get a, yeah, a better connection. So tonight guys is book club. It's, um, it's Wednesday night, it's book club. It's the last week we're going to be spending on this book. It's Robert Duff's book, great book, Hardcore Self-Help, Fuck Anxiety. And this is a book that everyone in the group wanted, well, people wanting the group wanted to look at a book on anxiety. This was the one that I chose. Um, and over the last three weeks, we've looked at three different chapters. We looked initially at what causes anxiety, you know, that, that um, triangle that we looked at, the triforce, you know, of thoughts and feelings and behaviours, how they all feed back into each other to effectively um, make you feel more and more and more anxious when you're having an attack of anxiety. We then looked at how we can control that. We looked at a great breathing exercise called four, seven, eight, where you breathe in for a count of four, you hold it for seven and you release for eight. We did that on the scope and um, it nearly put people to sleep in a relaxing, good way, not because it was boring. Um, so that was good. And then last week we looked at the physical symptoms of anxiety and how your body um, can really kind of, you know, be completely uh, debilitated by, you know, two chemicals, adrenaline and cortisol, and how those two little chemicals can be a big fucking deal when you're having a panic attack and it's all going off. Um, this week, I wanted to look at chapter eight, okay, and this was really... It's for everyone on here, but it's also for people who have never experienced anxiety. And I class, it's not like I've never experienced anxiety. I would say that thankfully I've never had an anxiety attack where it's dictated my life. I've felt anxious without a doubt before I go on stage, before I do a talk, um, at auditions, you know, natural anxiety I've felt. Um, and the reason that I started to read this book was to understand it because you guys were saying, some of you were saying that it was really, really impeding your life, like to the point where. You know, sometimes you couldn't leave the house, you couldn't be around other people, you would completely flip out, people felt like they were having heart attacks, the whole world was caving in on them, their lungs were going to explode, <laughs> all this kind of stuff. And um, tonight I want to look at how people who suffer from anxiety can talk to people who just don't get it. And you will give me some hearts if you've had people in your life, and particularly if it's your partner or a family member who's close to you who really doesn't understand what it's like to have this in their life. And they said things like, oh, you know, it's just all in your head. You know, oh, come on, just breathe. You know, at the time, you're like, fuck off. Like, you know, it's so much more than that. They don't, they don't know, all the hearts are coming through. They don't know what it's like. Um, and sometimes, yeah, you can act and kick off on them, you know, you can act in a way that isn't normally you, but when you're in that, that zone, it's not very nice. The worst is being told to snap out of it, says Anna. Yeah, you know, and I bet you get that, you know, quite a lot when, you know, when people... Um, you know, hear about these things, they think it's dead, dead easy. It's like, oh, just stop thinking about it then, or, you know, or just forget about that, or come on, pull yourself together, breathe, you know, all this kind of stuff. Um, and it's because they don't get it. And I would include myself, really, before I got into positive psychology and a lot of the science. I wouldn't have got it either. I really wouldn't have understood it. I mostly hear, why can't you just be normal? That's <laughs> funny. Since when has being normal got anyone anywhere funny? None of us are normal. None of us are normal. We've all got some crazy idiosyncrasies without a doubt. We've all got some, uh, some, you know, some, uh, unique attributes to our personalities. And so tonight, yeah, is basically Robert has written a letter which you guys can actually download. I'm gonna give you the web address. And you can send this letter to anyone who doesn't get it. Um, Cause I don't wanna be fucking normal. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can actually get this letter and you can send it to the people who might tell you, why can't you just be normal? If people are telling us to be normal, they're not our people, says Tony. Exactly, Tony. We want to be better than normal. We've got a vision that's higher than that for ourselves, for our lives, for our careers, for our impact on the world. Um, so yeah, I agree with you. I don't think any of us are kind of, you know, anyone on the planet's quite normal, whatever that is. Normal is not fun, funny, uh, says Dawn. So here we go. So chapter eight, how to talk to people who don't get it. And let me know, 
if um, if this is accurate for you guys, this letter that, that Robert's written. Um, like I say, I'm trying to understand it more and I can only understand it through you guys. I'm so grateful that you've all been so vulnerable on these scopes and in the Facebook group that we've got. If you're an actor and you're not in our Facebook group, come and join facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash acts on this TV. The most supportive group of actors I've ever seen. I mean, genuinely, like, I'm not just saying that, genuinely the most supportive group of people. I've seen complete strangers absolutely reveling and celebrating in complete strangers successes. And I've never seen that on any other Facebook group before. I've seen jealousy, I've seen envy, I've seen people ridiculing people, people complaining, whining, bitching. I've never seen the amount of positivity in any other group than we have in the Facebook group that we've all created. So I'm super grateful for that. It's a bloody awesome group, says Fanny. It really is. Um, definitely, I thank everyone on here for making it that way because you've all contributed. Um, you know, it's something that I uh, kind of, you know, effectively just set up, but you guys created it. You guys made it. I love you all, says Anna. So here we go. So, so Rob says, okay, so this is this is cool and futuristic. I tweeted out that I was working on a second edition of this book, and I asked if anyone had suggestions. One awesome fan made the perfect suggestion of writing a chapter about dealing with people who don't understand anxiety. Like I say, I class myself as this. I can't believe I didn't initially realize how useful that would be. Well, that's exactly what I wanna do this chapter, because I'm fairly certain that nearly every single person that I've met who suffers from anxiety also suffers from some dumb people in their life who just don't get it. Maybe you've heard a few of these gems. It's all in your head. You just need to stop worrying so much. Dude, just breathe. Or even, what's your problem? I'm sure statements like these really help, right? Not. Of course they don't. Okay, is that true or is that true? I think that's probably true. These are telltale signs that someone simply doesn't understand what you're going through. Be happy for them. That means that they've not felt the true shittiness of anxiety the way that you have. I do understand that this can be incredibly frustrating though. If this person is family, it tends to amp up the frustration factor even more. What's your problem? Heard that far too much, someone just said there. <laughs> Um, yeah, if this person's family, it tends to amp up the frustration factor even more. I think that, that often at times we try to communicate what it's like to have anxiety and then we give up when it doesn't seem to sink in for the other person. The process of trying to communicate clearly and find the right words to say can be anxiety provoking in itself. Couple that with the fact that you're exhausted from fighting your own private battle with anxiety all day and it can feel pretty pointless. So for those who do live with anxiety like regularly, is it is it for you a fleeting thing for a, 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 an hour or a few hours or is it genuine? Because I just want to understand this more. Is it like an entire day thing? Do you wake up with it and you go to bed with it or do you have respite from it? throughout the day what is it normally for you for you guys is it like you know a full-time thing one day a week one day a month you know or like just ongoing so that you are exhausted from it and thus try to explain to other people what it's like is going to be much harder bulk of the day every day says Fanny. right wow well i really hope we can we can we can start getting you know helping you a bit with this for this funny with the stuff that we're doing on these scopes totally depends says anna um so yeah, keep keep me posted, guys. I'll, I'll keep reading. So this is um, this is the letter that Robert wants to write. He says, "I want to help you out by providing some ideas about ways you can communicate to these people." Here's what we'll do: I'll write out a letter of sorts that you could recite out loud, or even give as a written or typed note to the person in question. This doesn't need to be an exact script, but it might get you started in the right direction. After I finish writing the letter, I will retrospectively break down some of the things that I've written um, by instinct and try to understand what some of the magic ingredients are for communicating with people who don't understand your anxiety. Now, I'm gonna read you this letter, and then at the end of this, I'm gonna give you a web address where you can go to and actually download this letter, copy and paste it into your phone, into an iMessage, onto whatever you want, Facebook, anything like that, and give it to people who just don't get it so that they hopefully do get it a little bit more. Uh, if you're watching on the replay, appreciate you, you'll find a link directly to the web address just below this video. Just have a look just below the video and you're gonna be able to click on it and go straight there. So it starts off, to whom this may concern. You are an important person in this individual's life. That's why you're getting this letter. My name's Robert, I'm a therapist and the author of a book about anxiety that this person has recently read. 
or I've read to you on Book Club. This means that they are trying to find resources to help pull themselves out of the crappy feelings that you've seen them struggling with. It can be immensely hard to explain what anxiety feels like. If you've never had significant issues with anxiety, you're an exceptionally lucky person because it really, really sucks. I want you to know that the person who gave you this letter is not trying to be difficult. If they had a magic wand that could help them suddenly stop struggling with these issues, I 100% guarantee they would use it without a moment's hesitation. Give me some hearts if you'd wave that wand. Have you ever felt the flight or fight response? Maybe you stepped out into the street without looking both ways and nearly missed uh, getting hit by a puke, cry and hyperventilate all at the same time. That's what anxiety feels like. Except it's not just a fleeting state of discomfort that happens once, it's something that can come on without much warning and it makes it very difficult to function. Trust me when I say that this person feels sad, guilty, and exhausted due to difficulties that anxiety causes them and the people around them. You don't need to know how to make them feel better and that's okay because it's not your responsibility. I think that's a really cool thing to put in the letter as well because ultimately it's your responsibility and hopefully you know people can own their anxiety. Scrooge stands here um, and um, you know, and, and, and really want to get a hold of it, you know, know why they want to get a hold of it, you know, and, and work through this. So Robert carries on and says, if you want to be awesome, I have a few tips that can help you be the best support possible for this person when they are enduring a hard time with anxiety. Firstly, don't take it personally. How many people have taken your anxiety personally? Let me know. They might act very differently when they are having a peak in their anxiety. Take the things that they say and do in context. I'm sure you've been through a hard time before and acted in ways that aren't quite in line with your normal self. Asking them if there is anything that you can do to help is great, but don't always expect to get a clear response from them. Things can be confusing when the anxiety monster is hitting hard, so knowing what uh, would help is not always clear. One question that most anxious people can give you an answer to is, do you need more space? If they say yes, please give them a little room to breathe and let them know that you'll be around if they need you. Try not to tell them it's all in their head because they know that already. It doesn't make the pounding in their chest, the pain in their head, the hyperventilation, uh, the sweating or the racing thoughts any easier to deal with. Anna says the connection is still a bit dodgy. Let me know if your connection is still dodgy, guys. Anna, it might just be your Wi-Fi tonight. There's no way that I can put you in their shoes, but I hope you believe me when I say that it's not as easy as just taking a breath and getting some fresh air. Miss Gypsy's connection is a bit dodgy as well. It could just be that Periscope's just bloody playing up tonight. Bear with us, guys, or X out and come back in. It might get better for you. Having anxiety does not mean that this person gets a blank slate to do or say anything they want. Fine here, says, uh, says Fanny. Excellent. You still have a right to be upset if they do shitty things. Um, but like I said before, try to make it, uh, try to take it in context. If you want to address the way that they're acting or the things that they are saying, maybe consider doing it when things have calmed down a bit. I also want to make it clear that you don't have to understand them or agree with everything they do to be supportive. This person's words feel chaotic and a good portion of their unease probably comes from feeling like they have no control over their environment and the things that happen to them. If they know that you are a constant who will be supportive no matter what, it can make a big difference. It's set off my triggers, be it internal or external, says Fanny. Oh, you must have been having to talk to somebody else there. That was a comment to Demo or something. Um, lastly, I'd like to tell you, good job. If you're still in this person's life, then you aren't like the others who have run away or disappeared on them so far. Let me know if you've had that. If people just suddenly go, I don't really want to kind of be there for you anymore because I don't get it. I don't understand this anxiety that you say you've got. And thus they kind of eject themselves out of your life. Let me know if you experienced that. Uh, he finishes by saying they need um, support on this journey and they really want you to be on their team. My whole life, says Fanny. Different for everyone, says Damo. Um, yeah, they need support on this journey and they really want you to be on their team. If you want to learn more about what this individual's experience with anxiety is like, then I encourage you to ask them. I'm sure, that they're, I'm sure when things are at their least crazy, they would be more than happy to sit with you and help you understand. 
Sincerely, Robert Duff, PhD, on behalf of the awesome anxiety warrior that gave you this note. So that's Rob's note that you can give to anybody if you, you know, are like, actually, you need to read a little bit more about what this is like. And if you're too exhausted to explain it yourself, like I said, I'm going to give you the web address so that you can download that note yourself and you can just Facebook it to people or send it them in messages or whatever you like. Now Rob's just going to read. We've got a page and a half left, two pages, two pages left on why Rob put the things in that letter that he did. And he starts by saying, okay, so that was written basically off the top of my head on my personal and clinical intuition. Let's break it down a little bit to see what some of the key ingredients are and how you might be able to utilize them to better communicate with these people in your life who are having a hard time understanding your struggle with anxiety. The first thing that comes to mind is that these people aren't trying to be annoying or mean when they suggest things to you. These are unsuccessful attempts at solving your problem. You aren't the only one who wants to make this crap go away for you. Trust me, I agree with that. There's people in my life who kind of suffer with this and they aren't the only one who wants to make this go away for them. I'm reading this book to you guys because I want to help you with it and make it go away for you. And I know it's not as easy as that. Um, but any times people say things to you that you know that might seem crazy to you, it's just because this person wants to help you, all right? We need to remember that. He says if they had a magic wand to make you feel better, they would also wave the hell out of it. My doctor just given me antipsychotics for my anxiety, and I'm oh I missed that last bit, Fanny. Let us know a little bit about them once I finish the book, so I can, so I've got a bit more time to uh, to to read the comments. Um, he says, however, anxiety is something that humans don't come into this world well equipped to handle. What results in someone who cares that you feel better? Uh, what results is someone who cares that you feel better? Uh, they're frustrated that things have to be this way right now and they've got few good tools to do anything about it. Therefore, they tend to go to the things that work for them as a normal. Someone who doesn't experience these issues. Things like getting some fresh air distracting yourself with other tasks or thinking positively may be perfectly acceptable to solutions to a small ounce of everyday stress, but they're barely a starting point for legit anxiety issues. If you would like to communicate this to them, I'd say that it can be helpful to do so during a time when you aren't already super anxious. For instance, if you had a blow up the night before and got into a fight over this person in effectively trying to help you, you might come to them the next day and say something like, hey, Look, I'm sorry about yelling at you last night. It's just that it's really hard to deal with in the moment. And when you say things like just breathe, it can be frustrating because I wish it was that simple. I'm trying to get better and I appreciate you trying to help, but next time I'm so worked up, it would be it would help me more if you try to give me more space and then try to suggest things to help. Okay, another thing that can really help people get it is to help them relate your experience to something that they've been through at some point in their life. I like this bit, guys. Listen to this. So he says, like, weddings, exams, job interviews, sports games, emergency situations, and other high-stress events are things that you might be able to point to at times um, where they have felt anxiety. They might say that um, these are times that everyone feels stressed out, but what they don't understand is that it's pretty much the norm for you. You can say something like, look, I want to tell you what it feels like to have this kind of anxiety. When you got married, did you feel nervous? Like right before you walked out and everyone was looking straight at you. Okay, well imagine that being your normal feeling. And when actual stress happens, it multiplies and makes you feel terrible. Maybe that's you, you know, maybe, maybe that is you, you know, like Fanny you said before, almost constantly all day, every day. I think that people also tend to not understand the other component of anxiety, which is the thoughts. Since your thoughts are invisible and you may or may not be making them known verbally, people in your life are likely to not understand what it's like to have a whirlwind inside of your brain, a whirlwind of persistent worries about God knows what. A good way to help them understand might be to make the analogy of rumination and worry being like a song that gets stuck in your head. I understand this now because of this. Listen to this. Most people have had a song stuck in their head at some point in their life. It's funny at first, then after a while it gets a bit annoying. It goes on for too long, it starts to be downright unpleasant. I'm not talking about your favourite song here, I'm talking about when you get some stupid commercial jingle stuck in your head and you only know one line from the whole song and no matter what you do, you can't get it out of your head and you're thinking about getting a spoon and carving the goddamn thing out of your brain. <laughs> he says, okay, that was a bit dramatic, but I think most people will understand what I'm getting at. 
Now, if you can get that person to imagine that intensity of thought and couple it with a negative thought of worry, they might be able to comprehend just a little bit more about how messed up the experience of anxiety can be. And I get that. I'm like, you know, I've had songs in my head, God, when I, or even when I've been recording radio jingles, I do a lot of voiceover. And sometimes I've been recording radio jingles for a few hours at a time. And I come home and honestly, I close my eyes and I'm still saying them in my head. And I know how annoying that can be. And that's just something that doesn't bring on anxiety. If, if that thought was something that would bring on anxiety for me and I can't get it out of my head, then I understand how that's then going to manifest into feelings, which will manifest into behaviors, which will then feed back into the thought. And then we get into that, tri that, that triforce again of where it's consistent building upon building negativity upon negativity of these thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. So I get that now. And that song analogy is, I think, a really powerful one. So he finishes, he says, that's it for my bonus chapter about ways that you might be able to better talk to those who just don't understand your anxiety. He goes, I'll go ahead and put a printable uh, version of that letter up on my website. And all you have to do is go to his website and it's Duff, the psych, so D-U-F-F, -F, the psych, so T-H-E, and psych is spelled P-S-Y-C-H, Duff, the psych, dot com, forward slash letter. And if you go to there, it says you can actually uh, you download that letter and you can hand it to someone in your life if you think it will help. Just like everything else in this book, the information and tips contained in this chapter will not fix the entire situation for you. But I hope that these were some different and interesting ways of approaching the task of trying to explain your experience to someone who has never been there. And for me, thankfully I'm very grateful I've never lived with it like that, anxiety like that. It's, it really helped me when I read that chapter to really kind of understand it and go, okay, you know what? It's going to help me be more compassionate. Um, it's going to help me maybe stop just trying to convince people, you know, that I can fix it like that by explaining the science behind it. Because ultimately you can explain it with science, but that doesn't always help somebody who isn't that way inclined. Um, so go get that letter, guys. DuffThePsych.com forward slash letter download it and then if you if this is something in your life and you're like you know what i need to kind of help people understand it but i i can't articulate the way i feel sometimes i'm just going to send them this letter and it's a really great letter um and it'll open up conversation and i think conversation for me when people have been vulnerable in front of me and this is the same for when i've been vulnerable in front of other people with issues in my life it just makes the whole thing so much easier for both of you to understand and sometimes when you are vulnerable yourself you end up understanding yourself a bit better and maybe understanding some of the roots of what is causing you to feel like this so i'd encourage everybody if you do have that person in your life or there's two people or that circle of friends in your life who maybe don't get it maybe you're the only one in your circle of five who kind of feels like this at this sometimes and lives with serious anxiety and you don't want to kind of put your head up and say guys look you know i don't want to admit this or um you know uh, maybe you don't get it and i'm afraid of how you're going to react um get that letter yeah duffthepsych.com forward slash letter and um and send it them you know i hope that's uh, i hope that's useful and um, so we've only had, had a chance guys to look at four chapters of robert's book and there are i think there's like 10 chapters in the book um, 10 chapters yet yeah, in the book and it's I just think it's really well written so for those who don't know Robert Duff if you've not been on the last three book clubs um, he's um, a PA, he's got a PhD in uh, positive psychology um, so a lot of the stuff behind this book is all science based uh, which is great you know it's proven it works but he writes the strategies and, and his experience of anxiety in this book and his wife suffers from serious anxiety as well um, he writes it in this book so plainly, vulnerably, really uh, openly. Mulgaps, whoever Mulgaps is, is here. Good evening. I don't know what your real name is, but your username. Uh, if you're part of the Facebook group, let us know. Let us know who you are. Um, but yeah, I would recommend people get this. It's like if you do, if you do live with anxiety, or you want to understand it a bit more. If you don't, you just want to have this in your toolkit, so you you know you can understand what it's like. Maybe if you're an actor and you've got to play someone with anxiety. Learning about it, if you've never experienced it, is really going to help you portray a character who's got it. Um, so I think it's always you know, useful to research stuff like this. Anything to do with the human condition and the way that we are is going to help you as an actor. Every part of your life affects every part of your life. I keep saying this on practically every periscope. So if you're improving yourself in one area of your life, if that's expanding your knowledge 
on human behavior you are really working on your acting career even if it's not practical so many people think they're not working on their acting careers unless they are in an acting class and it's bullshit you're working on it every single day every single minute you are alive and you're experiencing life you're working on your acting career so this book for those in the uk is about six pounds 25 you can get it on Kindle for about two pounds fifty. Fanny, who's on the scope tonight, has found it on, I think, an ebook, um, an audio book on YouTube, I think, uh, for free. Um, and she's always got sites where you can download books from via PDF for free. So check check Fanny out in the Facebook group. I'm sure she'll send you a link to where you can get it from. Um, but yeah, if you get the 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 paperback, I like to hold the book. Um, I love that. It's like six pounds twenty five. Um, so get it from Amazon. If you're watching on the replay, thank you again for watching. You'll be able to click on the link below this replay, below this video. that will take you straight through to Amazon.co.uk where you can buy it. Uh, if you're in America, get yourself on Amazon.com and, uh, and check it out there. And so I hope you found it useful. If you've not seen any of the previous book clubs, if you go to appsonthis.tv, um, you'll see uh, in the navigation, if you click on the navigation, you'll see a section that says Periscope Replays. And you can go into that and you'll see our Monday night scopes, which are called Motivation and Mind Hacks. And you'll see our Wednesday night scopes, which is our book clubs that we do every Wednesday. Um, go and watch them. There's 132, I think, that are currently in there. And you'll be able to catch up on the three chapters that you've missed of this book as well, where you can chill out. And if you don't like reading, I effectively just read it to you. <laughs> so it's like an audio book for free. Can't get it at Waterstones, it's not available, says Dawn. Ah, okay. Maybe it's self-published. Um, I don't know if it's self-published and just distributed through Amazon then, uh, if you can't get it at Waterstones. So uh, yeah, Amazon Dawn for you. Get to Amazon, it's definitely on there, that's where I got it from. Or the Kindle, you know, you get it from the, the Kindle store if you've got an iPad or an iPhone, you get the Kindle app and you can still use it. Next idea on a book. Um, yeah, we know, well, what do you want to look at? Has anyone got any ideas or should I, you know, I'm happy to choose a book for next week, but what, you know, what would you like to, uh, to cover? Has anyone got any burning issues in their life, acting careers, or just as human beings? You're like, we could cover that. Just as a side note, Ross, your biceps are looking great. Thanks, Ronnie. <laughs> that's, that's lovely. Thank you very much for noticing. Um, yeah, I try and keep myself in, in shape. It's my new morning routine. Gym five nights, uh, five nights, five mornings a week. It's seven, it's six forty-five. It's life changing. I'm telling you, morning routine is key, guys. Um, think and grow rich. We've already done dawn. So sorry if it cut out. Then I just noticed it just cut out. Um, think and grow rich is uh, is an amazing book by a guy called Napoleon Hill. I've got it up here somewhere. Uh, Oh, I don't know where it is now, but it's a great, it's a really, really great book. There it is. Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Um, it was written nearly a hundred years ago. Look, we've done it on Book Club. Here's all the sections that I uh, I was reading on the, on the Book Club that have been highlighted uh, throughout there. Uh, I mentioned that book, The Long Journey to Becoming 10% Happier. Oh yeah, I'll check that out, Fanny, as well. But yeah, get this book. If you if you um, want to watch the book club replays on this, they're available on actonthis.tv as well. Again, go to the uh, menu, click on the menu, and it'll slide out. And you'll see a little search bar. If you just type Think and Grow Rich into that search bar, or even just like Think will probably do it, it should bring up the book clubs on Think and Grow Rich. Um, they were some of the best ones we did. This book was written by a guy called Napoleon Hill, who met a guy called Andrew Carnegie, who was one of America's first billionaires. Now, I'm talking first billionaires a hundred years ago. He was a steel magnate from Scotland who was incredibly successful. So to think of a billionaire a hundred years ago is rather incredible, isn't it? And Napoleon met Andrew, and Andrew said, you know what, I'm going to introduce you to something like 104 or 105 of the greatest minds at that time. And over the space of about 25 years, um, Napoleon spent time with some of the greatest people who have ever lived. People like uh, Alexander Graham Bell, who invented the telephone, the Wright brothers, who invented aeroplanes, um, Thomas Edison, who invented the light bulb. Uh, Mr. Wrigley of Wrigley's Chewing Gum. Um, you know, chewing gum's quite good, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe not as integral as a light bulb, but it's pretty good. And um, and then what and um, what Napoleon did is he distilled down, he interviewed all these people and spent so much time with them that he distilled down their success into 17 principles. And the first principle was something called definiteness of purpose. 
and it was what gives one person in life a burning desire, a real purpose in life to go out and get what they want and what makes people not have this. Um, and all of the 16 principles after that one, they all rely on people having that first one. So if you don't have a definiteness of purpose right now in your life, um, go and watch, you know what, go and watch the videos that I released this week on bulletproofactor.com. They're completely free, three videos, which are gonna help you obtain a definiteness of purpose if you don't already have one. Um, Headspace by Andy Puddicombe is a good book. Headspace, yeah, it's a great book. Headspace is a great app. So Andy is like one of the world's most amazing kind of like monk figures who's massive on meditation. Um, and he released an app called Headspace, which you can get for your iPhone or Android completely for free. And you can do something called Take 10, which is a free 10-day meditation, uh, guided meditation practice that takes 10 minutes a day for 10 days. Um, you should do it. It will have a huge impact on your life. Uh, so maybe, yeah, we'll look at, we'll look at Andy's book at some point as well. Um, but yeah, that's a little insight into uh, Think and Grow Rich. But yeah, if you want to develop that definiteness of purpose, I promise you, go to bulletproofactor.com. Even if you're not an actor, just go and get these videos because it will it will absolutely relate to any human being on the planet. It might as well be called Bulletproof Plumber or Bulletproof you know, Waiter. or It could be anything. Um, it will have a huge impact on your life. Over 200 actors have watched the video since it went online yesterday. And some of the comments I've had, let me just read you guys just a couple of these if you've not already got the videos because this is incredible it humbles me so much to think something i've created can have this effect on people but it, it proves to me that science-based positive psychology works all right it isn't it isn't bullshit nonsense um that's just pie in the sky think positive and you'll have a great life i don't do that um it's all about how you can actually hack your boss i don't know what to say the video, that video is the most powerful thing I have ever seen. Um, he says, I couldn't see where to leave comments, so I'm gonna send you them in this email. You're giving up your time um, to reply. As I said, this video is just brilliant and I feel more positive already. Um, that's one email that I've had three from people today. Um, I missed that comment there. I think that was about a book. Put that comment on again. Um, but some of the uh, comments that have actually been left on the videos, I mean, there's over a hundred of them now underneath the video. Um, is astounding. Uh, video two comes out on Friday. Video three will be out on Tuesday. There's a special announcement at the end of video three for those who want to work seriously on their mindset uh, for the rest of this year to set themselves up for a, an absolute smashing, cracking, whatever you want to call it, 2017. Um, there will be some uh, further coaching that I'm going to make available um, to people who really want to dive deep and ultimately really get to that next level if you have been in the same place for the last year the last two years the last decade whatever it is for you you are absolutely kidding yourself if you think things are going to change by just hanging in doing the same thing that you've been doing for the last decade there's a reason why you haven't progressed if you are committed to making positive and lasting change in your life that's not only going to kind of affect your life right now quite quickly but it's going to set yourself up for literally a life of success, a better life for the next, I don't know whether you're gonna be on the planet in another 10 years, another 70 years, you know, another 80 years. If you invest in what I'm gonna make available later next week, um, you will live at a higher level, a higher state of being seriously for the rest of your life. Again, no bullshit. Go and watch the free videos and I'll prove it to you. Um, bulletproofactor.com. Look at this, hi Ross, amazing video. So interesting from start to finish. And then he goes on to talk about his limiting beliefs. Um, amazing video. I think having the belief um, to just go for it uh, emotionally and financially was a big thing for me. That's because I ask people about their limiting beliefs. Um, what have we got? Wow, yeah, I definitely have limiting beliefs. Um, says another user. Wow, that was so intense. It was so nice to finally uh, watch this video. Uh, looking forward to video two. Keep it going. You're amazing. So many limiting beliefs. Which did one to choose? Says one user. Uh, awesome stuff, Ross. Always skeptical about this kind of stuff, but felt myself getting more and more engaged with it. Um, I actually felt like you were talking directly to me most of the time. Uh, these are all genuine comments, guys. Let me see these on on Facebook that people have left underneath video one. There is video one at the top, your next level. Um, see video two's coming, video three's coming, and video four's coming soon. And then these are all the comments 
literally they just go on forever that people have uh, have left under the video go and check it out bulletproofactor.com if you've not already seen it and um, so that's it for this week i'm gonna be back on monday guys for motivation and mind hacks thanks so much and um, to people for uh, sticking on the scope uh, if you're watching the replay i appreciate you as well and um, come and join us next time live if you're watching on the replay if you want to watch any further replays go to actsonthis.tv if you're not there already um, and check out the um the other videos that are there uh, I'm going to release a podcast on Friday as well. I do a podcast every Friday called Five to Thrive. You can get it on iTunes completely for free. Just search for Acts on This TV, all one word, in the iTunes store, and I will deliver a brand new episode of Positive Psychology um, to you every single Friday um, for the facility of this TV. Um, so thanks for watching. I hope that's been useful. I'll get another book for next week. I'll let you know in the Facebook group what that is. And if you've got any suggestions, please tweet me at Ross A. Grant or leave it in the Facebook group and I will, um, you know, I will take a look at it. I um, appreciate you. I hope it's been worthwhile. Go and get some uh, some rest. Um, and yeah, download that letter, duffthepsych.com forward slash letter. Send it to anybody who you think it will help understand anxiety if they're not living with it. So until next time, guys, thank you. Thanks, Fanny. Um, thanks ever so much for everybody sticking with us. Um, Hopefully the audio is all right. I'm going to go listen and see if this microphone was working. If not, I will fix it for next time. Uh, and I'll catch up with you guys soon, all right? Appreciate you. Bye for now.